Good day, everybody. Welcome back to another Rush Reviews, and today we are back in another Daihatsu high jet. And today we are in a street version. So this thing's been modified for like street use. It's a manual rare. And guys, I just had to get in this thing, show you guys kind of the other side of these high jets because. The last time I did get in one, it was the automatic, uh, and I kind of sold you on the idea that, you know, it's a cool little four-wheel drive ute. Well, it's also a very cool little ute that can rip up the streets because this one, as you can see, it's got the 14-inch wheels on it. It's being, like, lowered, I think, here. we got a body kit on it, and, yeah, this thing, again, in the manual... It takes it to that next level, and I just wanted to show you guys exactly how this thing feels compared to that CVT automatic. You can also get it in. So guys, obviously, let's just cover the basics again here. If you haven't seen the previous video I have done on one of these, click the pop-up banner right here, check it out. It'll cover a lot of the basics here, but this thing, again, it is a K car. It's a K truck, essentially, from Japan. These are imported. They're made by Daihatsu. And Toyota is actually their parent company. So the quality is reasonably good here, guys. You know, the reliability is there. And underneath the seat, we do have a three-cylinder. Puts out a whopping 50 horsepower and about 60 newton meters. So, you know, look, this thing is not going to win any races and we are most definitely going to attempt the 0 to 100 one more time because in the CVT we actually failed we, we could only get to 98 and we were already doing like a quarter mile so uh, yes hopefully the manual is gonna fix that and this thing's gonna do it <laughs> Ross, what, what? what are you doing? Oh, are you doing? shoot. Yeah, sorry guys, this high jet. Um, yeah, look, no, I was just catching up on my favorite Japanese anime on Netflix. Yeah, thanks to Surfshark, I'm actually able to catch up on all my favorite movies and TV shows that I can't actually access here in Australia. Wait, so there's other TV shows in other countries? Yes. <laughs> because Surfshark is a VPN tool, guys, that allows you to change your IP destination. So for example, if you want to watch shows that are only available on the Japanese Netflix or only available on the American Netflix, you can actually change your IP address on the fly to those destinations and access them. Surfshark not only protects you guys from scammers and hackers, it's going to stop them from being able to access your passwords, your private messages, and it's even going to keep your web browser history safe for you guys. So. Uh, Yeah. So guys, don't run the risk, especially if you guys are using public Wi-Fi regularly. Use my code ROSS today and you're going to get yourself an extra three months of Surfshark absolutely for free. And these guys have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what do you got to lose? Absolutely zero. So huge thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video today. The high jet. Uh, this is what we were talking about, wasn't it? So. Have a look at this thing, guys. Again, these were only really sold in Japan. This particular one, why I wanted to review it today, how cool is this street setup? So a lot of people like to take these things off-road. They like to lift them up, put off-road wheels on them, take them off-road because these are a four by four, but I like this setup. You know, he's got some street wheels on here. Um, these particular ones are 14 inches and they just look cool. You know, even, <laughs> these bars they got on the side like that's all aftermarket and it just makes this thing look cool even at the back we've got this like proper truck setup of like a, a a mud flap chrome bumper at the rear again this is the beauty of these things and why they're just so cool as a little work truck because it's got this awesome bed back here chuck 350 kilos up to in the back 
you know, you could fit a couple of dirt bikes in this thing. Like, to me, that's just, it's so cool. And again, this is the jumbo cab, so it is bigger. And if you come here, let me show you on the inside. So, this particular one, again, these are two-seater. This one's got an actual aftermarket rev counter on the gauge cluster here. So it's very basic, the gauge cluster. Uh, you've got a cup holder here, two cup holders down here. So you're already doing better than a 79 series. And you've just got basic climate control. Four-wheel drive controls are right here. And this one, why I wanted to review it, five-speed manual. So that's just cool as hell. Uh, you got your high, low range, four-wheel drive control right here. And even got an infotainment system on this one. So again, partial shelf up the, up the top. That's the jumbo, got more headroom. You got a bit of a shelf behind the seats as well. That's really it. You know, look, look at the door. It's just, it's bare. Like this is all, this is all the metal here, guys. Like it's just, there's nothing to it, but that's kind of the beauty of it. We do have... Um, electric windows, which was a bit of a surprise. The smallest door cards I've ever seen, ever. But uh, let's get this thing back on the road. We're gonna test out the Zero to 100 shortly. Um, yeah, this thing is just fun. Now, prices of these things, if you buy one in Japan, brand new, translate that to Australian dollars, it's gonna cost you around like 24 grand from my calculations. Uh, look, when you're gonna buy one here in Oz, it's actually not that much more expensive to be fair. You know, this particular one, again, it's available at Next Ride. Huge thanks to them. Link is down below if you wanna check this one out. And essentially, they are selling them, you know, here in Oz for around that 30, 30 grand mark. It's around that 30. And to be honest, by the time you've done your importing, your taxes, like getting this thing registered, if you were gonna buy a brand new one in Japan, you're probably gonna spend at least that. So it's not absurd pricing here. You know, a lot of people will say 30 grand for this thing is a lot. And 30 grand is a lot of money, but you gotta remember what you're getting here. You know, this particular one, it's got 2000 Ks on it. So, you know, it is essentially brand new. Um, and yeah, literally, it's a brand new vehicle. So, you know, the fact that any brand new vehicle nowadays is just stupidly expensive here in Oz or just terrible quality. Yes, this thing is basic. Yes, this might not look like a flash, nice thing to daily around. It's not for, not for the typical family. Let's, let's get that straight. But the fact is, if you're a worker, you're a tradie, you got a business that's in the city, uh, this could really tick a lot of boxes for you. But the one thing I'm gonna say, especially here in Australia, it's not easy to get a speeding fine in this thing. So that is a very good positive because the fact is this thing is gonna keep you under that speed limit. And uh, at the end of the day, you wanna keep your license, that might be a good thing. <laughs> Some tradies, I tell you what, Now guys, if you're enjoying this type of content, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button, click the bell notification so you get updated on all my weekly uploads. And guys, we're uploading two times a week here. Uh, plenty of cool, interesting cars on the way. Does help us out. Hit subscribe, leave a comment, hit the like button. We do appreciate you. Already I gotta tell you guys, the manual is far better than the CVT automatic. And I don't care what you say because the CVT, again, it's just so, like it's just so drainy and whiny in here. You have far more control when you have the manual. And again, like just start in second and just row the gears nicely and you don't hear the engine having to strain itself all that much. We're in the automatic, even just kind of going off the light, you, know, you really can hear the motor whine a bit and Again, you gotta remember, this isn't uh, insulated. You're gonna hear road noise. You're gonna hear that little motor under your seat really scream if you're pushing it. So uh, in the CVT, I just noticed a lot of more engine noise, a lot more road noise. And yeah, it, CVTs are never great. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're gonna stop and let's hope it gets to it. Go, 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 go. 
<laughs> Come on. 60. Let's go. We're in fourth. Come on. 75. 80. Come on, we're 93. We're going to do it. We're going to get 100 this time. Let's go. 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you guys. Let me tell you guys. When we did this test, the CVT automatic would not go past 98. We were starting to struggle. I could see when we hit 98, it's almost a wall. So it was like 98, still 98, 99, 98, and then it went 99, 100. And it was like, yeah, look, honestly, guys, 100K is an hour. It'll do it, this one especially. But yeah, let's see what the time actually was. <laughs> so we've stopped, and I'm looking at the phone now. And uh, I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> anyway, 35.89 seconds. Valid. Validated. The draggy. 35.89 seconds. So that's just crazy. We've got some other stats here I can show you as well. We did the quarter mile in 23.2 seconds. That's just crazy. Yeah. Hi, Jeff. Really what I think is a bit of a shame too is the fact that a lot of countries can't import these. So look, I believe in the UK you can. Uh, Australia, we are fortunate enough to be able to. But you know, places like America, I have seen them there. I don't know how they got there, but they're apparently not meant to be imported. Um, so it, it's a bit of a shame too, because you know, look, all these governments now harping on about green this, eco that, uh, you know, let's get a battery. The fact of the matter is this thing is economical as hell. They're cheap to build, cheap to replace, uh, they're recyclable, and they use bugger all fuel. You know what I mean? So the fact is they should be actually harping on for us to buy more of these rather than these $100,000 electric toys. Um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say, but these are really good value. Uh, I think these are great. It's a shame that a lot of the places can't import these. Merging up to 80. 70. 80 into fifth. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the problem is, you know, look, overtaking in this thing would be basically impossible on the highway. Uh, yeah, you, you can do 100 on the freeway. It will sit at it. But, yeah, you are really maxing this thing out pretty much. So, uh, again, that's just the biggest negative of this car is it's a bit sketchy, it's a bit unsafe, it's a bit too slow for the highway, but you can do it. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it for you know hours a day, but you gotta just whip up to the next exit or the second next exit or whatever, you know, you can definitely do it. Um, but again, yeah, it doesn't really like sitting at 90, 100 Ks an hour, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit sketch. <laughs> but I love this thing. Alrighty guys, so we're gonna finish the video off here today. Look, a huge thanks to Next Ride again for loaning us this high jet. And let me just clarify again. Get the manual if you can. You know, look, the manual is 100% better. It's way better than the CVT. Uh, the manual is faster than the CVT. And yeah, these, these little trucks, they're just cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you're new here, and we will see you on that next video. Take care, guys.